Alrighty, we're back in my long-awaited review of Paranoid Android 3. Plus is finally here. Let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and swipe that to the left now. J again, jumping back to the home screen, this is based on Android 4.2.2. So of course we have all of our um, you know lock screen widgets that you would expect out of uh, you know regular Paranoid Android or I'm sorry Android 4.2. But you'll notice with Paranoid Android starting from the lock screen. Say for instance we are in a widget. You know perhaps we're in this widget here. Go ahead and just long press on the uh, lock button and it'll go ahead and jump right in there. You don't have to click on it and then go ahead and swipe to unlock, which is really, really convenient. Now you'll notice, and I'm just going to get this out of the way right now, yes, I have themed my device for Star Wars. I like Star Wars a lot and I decided how cool would it be to just go, and go with a kind of a simple uh, black and white theme. Um, these particular icons are from an application called The Ultimate Icon, that's T-H-A Ultimate Icon. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a video down the road on how to really customize the look of your Android device without having to go through um, downloading a bunch of different themes and stuff like that. Some, sim some thim simple, simple? Some simple theming tips for you guys. Uh, anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and jump into this particular ROM. So Paranoid Android is a really cool ROM. Um, lately, they've really, really stepped up their game. Um, in fact, I would probably put them up there on a pedestal among probably one of the most innovative ROM developers yet. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great ROMs with their AOKP, Sanage, and Mod. This ROM just really takes it to a whole new level. Why? Well, you'll notice, where did all of my um, buttons go down there at the bottom? This is the Nexus 4, so I should have on-screen buttons. Well, they're not there. Well, the reason behind that is because if you long press on the power button, you'll notice we have an option for expanded desktop. Now, if I was to go ahead and click on that, it kind of restarts it and my buttons reappear. Now with that said, you can actually color those different buttons and you can also add additional buttons as well. And that's really great. You can also, if I had it up there, my, um, uh, my notification bar or status bar if you will uh, you can also theme those colors as well which is great so you can have this sort of a theme look throughout the device now I'm gonna go ahead and press on the power button again and get back into my expanded desktop and now we've got this really nice simplistic clean look to it but how am I gonna navigate right well go ahead and swipe up from the bottom and you'll notice we've actually got something called Pi control which a lot of you guys have probably been hearing a lot about and may have even uh, played with yourselves and I actually have the Pi control um, sort of color theme to go with the rest of my theming uh, choices as well. You've got all of your notifications right there. If I was to go ahead and just swipe up to there, you can see that it highlights it. And if I let go, it'll jump right into it. Oh, Nick, you're one racist dude. That's one of my Xbox buddies. <laughs> um, you'll also notice that we actually, if I was to go back in there, we actually already have a ROM update. This ROM is consistently being updated, which makes me feel really good about the developers. Um, Moles, Moles Are Coming is the developer for the Nexus 4 Paranoid Android releases, and he's done just an amazing job. In fact, he's probably one of the most helpful uh, ROM developers I have ever come across on XDA developers. If you go into the Nexus 4 Paranoid Android thread and you have questions, there's not only a really good chance that the community will be able to assist you in whatever your needs are, but Moles Are Coming, the developer, is more than helpful and my hat really goes off to him for his patience in helping everybody understand how to either fix their ROM or get it working properly. So, uh, with that said, you'll also notice that we've got, um, you know, our time. I can go ahead and swipe off to the left there and it brings up our toggles and so on you can add more toggles if you wanted and so on and so forth uh, the ROM is just really really useful you can also control and add or remove um, different buttons to this pie control if you want as well as well as I'm gonna say as well as several times here you can read you can move around the positioning the placement or as what they call the gravity of this pie control you can have it on the left or the right um, respectively which is really useful now we'll go ahead and jump into the settings menu and you'll notice here right away that we've got this sort of a tablet look to it. Uh, I might need to refocus. There we go. All right, refocused. All right, back on track, Jared. Here we go. So uh, moving down from here, you know, we've got all the basic stuff that you'd expect from an AOSP-based ROM. Uh, you know, brightness, sleep, and daydream, and all that stuff. Uh, but where the real fun begins is when we jump down to um, the customization. You'll notice that this actually has Super User built in. So if you do decide to flash this ROM and you're a big fan of Super SU, uh, it is highly recommended that you uninstall Super SU. If you can't actually find it in the Applications Manager of 
your ROM or you know Paranite Android once you flash this, just go ahead into the Play Store, locate Super SU, and there'll actually be an uninstall option. Um, go ahead and tick that, and it'll uninstall Super SU for you. Of course, there's other ways of getting around that as well, but that's just the method that I used. Hats off to Sam J. Pullen uh, for actually pointing that one out to me. Um, so moving on from there, you've got themes. So I mean, if you do have different themes like Cyanogen mod based themes and so on, you can go ahead and apply those. Very, very useful. Um, we've got different options for the lock screen, as you can see here. I uh, will just let you take a look at that for just a moment. You can do maximize widgets. You can add, you know, all kinds of stuff, rocker volume, music control. So instead of having to, you know, unlock the device and, you know, mess around with the different music control options, skip and, and, and reverse and all that stuff, uh, you just go ahead and long press on the either the um, volume up or volume down. You can go ahead and skip your music. That's one feature that I've always really appreciated in custom uh, bass ROMs. Moving down from there, we've got toolbars. Now, this is where I was showing you before with when I had it um, in the unexpanded desktop mode, where I had additional um, buttons down there on my nav bar, one of which was the menu button uh, or settings button, whatever you might want to call it. And this is where you would add those. Uh, you can also choose limit of notifications and all kinds of great stuff here, as well as all the different Pi Control options. Now, Paranoid Android is where Pi Control sort of started from. So there's a lot of different ROMs out there, like Pac-Man and stuff, that have taken excuse me, the Pi Control and kind of made it their own, but they, a lot of them have really stripped down versions of the Pi Control. This is the unstripped down, unadulterated version of Pi, and it is just absolutely fantastic. Now, I've told you guys in the past many times that I really don't like overly complicated, um, overly settings saturated ROMs. Now, for a lot of you guys out there, this may seem like one of those types of ROMs. However, um, the way that they've made it is that it's really hard to explain. You can make it very simplistic. And the uh, each one of these customization settings has a very great description to let you know exactly what it does. And so as you can see, based on my home screen, I actually made this ROM quite simplistic for me. You know, there's no busy stuff going on, on the screen. I just kind of swipe up and everything's there. Now, in the past, I haven't used Pi Control a whole lot because, well, I had a lot of issues going into full screen applications like games and so on where the Pi, when I swiped out from the side, uh, wouldn't actually show up so the only way I was actually able to uh, exit out of those particular applications was to long press the home button get out of expanded mode press the back button and so on and so forth now you may have noticed that I just jumped into the uh, hybrid settings here I'll actually back out of here again so you can see so we've got hybrid properties go ahead and click on that it brings this up so you've got all these different colors now this is where they've really really gotten creative aside from the uh, pie controls they've given all of us you can actually customize the um, DPI of the entire system layout of your device. I actually prefer mine just to be on stock UI, but you can have sort of a hybrid where you've got phablet UI and so on, uh, as well as what's really cool is you can actually control um, particular application uh, colors. So now by saying that, I don't mean that the colors of the overall applications themselves, but I'm uh, speaking in terms of like perhaps um, you know if you happen to be in the Google Play Store and you wanted you know maybe these pie controls and the status bar or maybe even your ROM uh, the navigation bar down there with those virtual buttons to be a certain color maybe you want it to be blue in every single application you can customize what the color is of these particular system overlays um, can be and that is really cool that is called true customization folks so uh, again clicking back in a launcher it'll bring you right back in here again if we go ahead and click on interface this is where you can really start customizing stuff. So you can change out the layout, as you can see here. You can change around the nav bar, DPI, or um, size, I'm sorry, and the lock screen, DPI, everything. You can customize everything to your liking. And that is really, really impressive. Now, again, I like simplistic, so I've kept everything at kind of full and maximum everything. So it doesn't mean that you guys, just because you have the options, doesn't mean that you're being forced to choose between Fablet UI for each individual um, circumstance. You can keep it all based and stock, but then again, add Pi Control to really minimize the look of your uh, home screen and just the overall UI of things, uh, which I really, really appreciate. You can choose global apps and, you know, per app DPIs. Here's the different color settings that I've decided to choose uh, to theme my device the way I wanted to. Um, you know, we can go down to applications, and this is where you would start changing around the colors of each particular application. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, they actually have um, this option here. Now, if I was to click on that, uh, and to click apply, uh, it actually has some default setting colors for a bunch of different um, applications like your launcher and the Google Play Store and stuff like that. So depending on the particular actions or areas that you're in in those particular applications, these colors will pop up. But again, you can customize that 
all on your own. Um, it even has an option for, if we go into tools, for advanced expert mode. And this really allows you to take full control and full advantage of all of those settings options. Um, the battery life on this thing has been fantastic with the stock kernel. Um, it is much better than stock Nexus 4. Um, however, I decided to go with the Faux or Fox or Faw, depending on where you're coming from, <laughs> his kernel, and in addition to the uh, Fox Clock application, companion application. Um, and again, I'm using Nova Launcher, if you guys are wondering, so I just kind of double tap to access my applications, and that works out really, really well for me. That way I don't have to have any particular applications uh, button there. Now, as far as stability is concerned, they have done an absolutely fantastic job on stability. Um, this is one of the few AOSP custom, like full true custom ROMs that has complete stability. I can't say enough good things about this ROM guys I strongly highly even recommend you guys download the ROM play with it see if you like it there's updates all the time um, updating the particular ROM is just as easy as downloading the update and downloading the G apps uh, their, their specific paranoid Android G apps and just flashing you don't even have to do wiping really of anything you can just dirty flash it all just make sure you flash G apps right after you update the ROM and that is that anyways guys that is paranoid Android this is actually Actually, version 3.1. Um, I'll be posting a link in the description below for you guys to go find it for your Nexus 4. There, it, it is available for the Galaxy S3 as well as various other devices. So just look on XDA for your particular device, and I'm sure it'll be available for you. Uh, thanks again for watching, everybody. That is it for now. If you like this video, please do shoot me some love. It helps a lot by hitting that likes button down below, as well as subscribing for more videos like this one in the future. We do have videos every Monday and Thursday, as well as a bunch of surprise videos in between. Like like this one. Also, if you want to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus to stay up to date on all of my videos, those links will also be in the description down below. Again, that's it for now. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.